Hello, welcome to another drive by code session. Uh, this is going to be number five, I believe, in this series about how to make a programming language or how to make programming languages in general. You can make as many as you want. Um, so, we are in the process of building a programming language called MyPL. Again, WhiteKit wrote the code. I'm going to replay it and explain what he did. If you missed the first episodes in the series, I recommend that you go back and check them out before continuing with this one. Um, so currently, we we have built a parser for the programming language, and I'll, I'll, I'll just briefly go over how that works. So the programming language is called MyPL. This is code in MyPL. Um, we have two examples, example one dot MyPL, uh, has two variable assignments. Uh, example two has a while loop and a print statement in it. Um, we have a parser which we can invoke using node parse.js, the name of the MyPL program, and it will parse it. And the output of the parse is going to be an AST, which again, that stands for. Uh, abstract syntax tree and the format of the abstract syntax tree we, we're representing it as a simple javascript objects and in fact it's in json format this program the code of this program is represented exactly as this ast so now that we have this parser working uh, we're ready to write another program they will take this ASP as input and generate JavaScript. So that's what this episode is going to be about. So this is going to be, um, we're going to take in code, which is the AST. It's going to generate JavaScript. And this program that we're going to build is a transpiler. Um, and to flesh everything out, so we've done the parser, now we're gonna build the transpiler, the yellow box. So let's get started. So, all right, so first thing is let's make a Node.js program called generate.js. <clears throat> and uh, I'm gonna kind of gonna speed over this code. It's gonna use async await, which uh, Wycat and I also made an, a series about async await, so you can go check that out if you like. Um, but basically, what this program is going to do is read in the file, in the uh, .ast file, um, which is that's the input file name. It's going to use that to create uh, or generate a .js file using the base name of the input file. It's going to read in the contents of the AST file uh, there and json.parse to get to convert it into object form and then and then have this function that takes in the AST form and generates some JS code. And then it'll go ahead and output that JS code. It says it wrote a file called example1.js. Let me see if that exists. It does. and it, it says console.log hello world. Now, given a given a program, a MyPL program, can we convert this code into the equivalent JavaScript code? Let's go ahead and do that. Um, well, we can input. Well, I mean that input line was a little janky, but we'll, we'll start small and say let's start with just a variable assignment. <laughs> Okay, so how do we handle variable assignments? Let's first loop through the statements because if you look at the AST file, let's bring up the ASP, AST file for this example. This, this program just has one var variable assignment in it. It looks like that. So if we wanna just start small and support variable assignments, we first need to loop through uh, this array of statements. Let's see this side by side here. So we're gonna use this for loop for of 
getting fancy using new JavaScript syntax here uh, to loop through these array of statements. And uh, I'm going to say if the statement's type is variable assignment, we're going to push a line of JavaScript into this lines variable. These lines, these are lines of JavaScript. Um, and then and then we'll format the JavaScript code like this. We'll get we'll grab the variable name from the AST. In this case, it's going to be n here, right? And then we'll grab the value, the initial value, also from the AST, and then use them to generate this line of this let statement in JavaScript. At the end, uh, we'll gather all the lines and join them together into a JavaScript program. So let's see if that works. So again, the input of the generate program is an AST file. And the output is a JavaScript file. Let's look at the JavaScript file now. Close this. That looks like valid JavaScript to me. So now let's have multiple variable statements, variable assignment statements, and redo the parse and redo the generate. And now this JavaScript, there's multiple variable statements now. That's awesome. All right. Now, what if the right-hand side of the assignment is a more complex expression like this, m, m plus n times 3? What's going to happen now? Let's try it. I think it'll break, but... So, ran through this. Anyway, even though I know it's not going to work, the output looks like that, which is clearly not valid JavaScript. So let's go ahead and fix that. How can, what can we do here? Well, let's have a separate function that just generates JavaScript expressions, right? An expression is what? Well, we know that from the parser, from the grammar, an expression expression is something that yields a value, right? After you evaluate the expression, you get a value. And an expression can either be an unary expression, which can be a number or identifier, or it can be a binary expression, which has this operation on it. So let's have a function that converts a MyPL statement, uh, sorry, converts a MyPL expression into a JavaScript expression. And if we have that, we can just use that, convert this expression. Now this value would be JavaScript expression, and we plug it in it, into this JavaScript statement here. Okay, so how now how is this going to work? We'll say if the expression is an object, then we're going to do further stuff with it. If it's not an object, we're going to assume it's either a string or a number, which means it's like a variable reference or just a just a literal number. If it is an object, we're going to look at what is the type of the AST. And if it's a binary expression, we're going to recursively call ourselves to evaluate the left-hand side and the right-hand side because both the left-hand side and right-hand side could potentially be binary expressions in of themselves. So this is where recursion comes in handy, and all those years of geeking out on computer science is really paying off now. OK, so now after you have left-hand side and right-hand side, we're going to get the operator and put together this line of JavaScript. Left-hand side, operator, and then right-hand side. Let's see if that works. And it does, except that the multiplication symbol is not recognized by JavaScript. Ouch. What are we going to do? Uh, well, let's have an operator map that just translates all of the operators for us from MyPL to JavaScript. So we'll look up this operator map in order to do the translation and uh, do it again. So generate. Example one JS again. Let's look at that, and that works now. That's valid JavaScript. I can tell. So very cool. We just translated this MyPL code into this JavaScript code. 
print statements. Let's make print statements work. So I'm going to add three print statements to this program to see the the output of this this computation here. <clears throat> um and let's try to generate stuff uh actually no let's make them work first before even attempting so again using a similar scheme we can say if the statement let's look at the statement let's look at the ast so this is the ast now it's got some variable assignments it's also got some print statements now so for the print statements we want to be able to handle them so we'll say if the statement type is print statement we have to uh, at our disposal this generate JS for expression now. We can reuse for this case. We can say the expression we're gonna print. We're gonna run it through generate JS for expression to convert the expression from IPL to JavaScript. So this expression now is an expression in JavaScript, and you know how to print in JavaScript console.log easy so now let's generate the javascript for this ast so input ast output javascript and now that looks actually like a valid javascript program to me run it and we get answers we have a we have a like living and breathing programming language now um let's try example number two which had a while loop. What if we can get the while loops to work? Okay, so this is the AST of this while loop, right? It's got a condition, it's got the body, which has more statements in it. What if we make the generator work with the while loop? How's that gonna go? Well, a while loop is just another type of statement, right? And the condition, again, we can piggyback on this generate JS for expression to convert the conditional of the while loop to a JavaScript version of that conditional. And then as for the body, oh my God, we can just use this ge top level generate JS function to, to generate the JavaScript code for the body because this body, right, is an array of my PL statements in the same way that the top level program is an array of my PL statements. So if we had a function that already will take an array of statements and convert it to JavaScript, that function will also work for this body. So just plug this function right in to reuse. Again, this is recursion too. This is generate JS is calling generate JS. We just plug it right in to convert the body of the while loop into JavaScript. Uh, and now we just format this code like so. I think he made a mistake, forgot to make this body reference dynamic. He's gonna fix that here at this point. So he's generated this JavaScript code, which looks like a valid while loop. There's a couple of problems, but he's gonna fix that. First, let's indent this code, which is actually not as hard as it might seem. You split up the string into lines, uh, use map to add some white space at the beginning of each line, and then join them back together. Regenerate it. And now we have indentation. There's still another problem, which is, is that this n variable has been redeclared, and that's gonna break everything. So we need to not redeclare this n and remove this let. This is what we want. So how can we do that? Well, let's just keep track of all the variables that have been declared so far in in an array. And uh, in order for all parts of this generator to to know about this array of variables we'll just pass them in to every single function call there and we'll say initially the array is empty and you can uh, as you encounter these var statements you'll uh, push into this array so now we can say hey if uh, if this variable has never been declared we're going to declare it using this let statement and push the variable into this array. 
which keeps track of the declared variables. But if it's already in there, so else, then we'll just have a normal assignment instead of a let statement. So let's regenerate the JavaScript. And now that looks like a valid JavaScript program with a while loop. So run it. Bam, it actually works. Uh, this, it seems to start at two, which is probably not intended. So let's fix that by, uh, by rewriting the my PL code and rerunning the JavaScript. And now it starts at one. Okay, that's cool. Um, now let's make a run script that kind of allows us to run a MyPL program in one step. So at this point, we, we have a run script. It's gonna take as input a MyPL file, and the output is just gonna be the output of the program because this is gonna run the parser, run the gen to generate a .ast file. It's gonna run the generator to generate a .js file. It's also gonna run the node program to execute the JavaScript file all in one step. <clears throat> so let's see what happens now. Let's just skip to the end because no programming language would be complete if you couldn't write the Fibonacci series in it. So let's write the Fibonacci series now. So, all right, Fibonacci series, we're gonna loop from one to 10, basically. This is the starting, the I is the loop counter and N is where to stop. Uh, so we're gonna keep track of the current number in the Fibonacci series and the next number after it. Usually you call it F of I and F of I plus one. I'm gonna call them F I and F I I. And then let's have this while loop that's like we're gonna go up from i from one to n which at the present is 10. i'm gonna print out the current number in this series which for, it will start at one and then we do this swap thing we need this temporary variable to perform this swap now so this is like a add and swap operation so now f of i goes into f of i i goes into f of i and f of i i gets the value of adding the two numbers together. Run that. We have an infinite loop because uh, YKit forgot to increment i here inside the loop. So he's going to fix that really quick. Uh, the reason we get this gnarly error is because the infinite loop generated so much output that uh, the Node.js's child process command uh, ran out of buffer space. <laughs> So we run that again, and now we have the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, let's bump that number a little bit and we can get even more numbers. So there is proof that we have an actual working programming language. Um, I hope that you enjoyed watching the creation of this programming language, which we called MyPL. Um, me and WhiteKit, we're gonna continue making this series and we'll dig into more details about how parsers are made and how code generators are made and in general, the art and craft of making programming languages. Thank you for watching.